The entire M4 chip lineup for Apple's Macs has just leaked by Mark Gurman this past Thursday, including everything we need to know about the leaks, which chips are going into which Macs, when those Macs are coming, with all the release dates, everything, and especially one detail that he didn't really talk about, but it confirms the existence of the M4 Extreme chip going into the Mac Pro. So in this video, I'm gonna break down and explain everything about the entire M4 chip lineup, and I'm gonna talk about why I think that Extreme chip is coming and what it's gonna mean for you. Now, Mark broke the news that the M4 chips are starting to come later this year, which is earlier than everybody expected, because the chips have been on a 1.5 year timeline from the M1 to the M2, and then from the M2 to the M3, so we figured we'd get the M4 chip in the spring of next year, but no, we're gonna start getting those chips later this year. And not only that, but Mark said that every single Mac is going to have an M4 chip by the end of next year. And this is really important because some Macs do skip some chip updates. Like for example, the 24 inch iMac never got updated with the M2 chip and it skipped straight to the M3. And right now we have the M2 Mac mini, which hasn't been updated. Meanwhile, all of the other Macs have gotten the M3 chip. And apparently, according to Mark Gurman, he thinks that it could be skipped waiting for the M4 chip. But none of the future Macs are going to skip the M4 lineup because of a couple of very important reasons, including the fact that these chips will feature dedicated AI hardware to support some new AI features, just like we're expecting for the A18 chips for the iPhone, as well as the fact that they'll be built on the new N3e node from TSMC, which I'll explain in just a minute. Now, as far as the chip leak, we have three code names that were leaked. We have the Donan chip, which will be the M4, replacing all of the M3 Max. Then there's gonna be the Brava chip that's gonna be going into the higher end Max, like the MacBook Pros and the higher end Mac Mini. And then finally, we have the Hydra chip, which is specifically designed for the Mac Pro, according to Mark Gurman. And I believe this one is gonna be called the M4 Extreme chip, and I'll explain why in just a minute. But first, I've gotta talk about the release dates of each Mac, which Mark Gurman just updated the other day on his Power On newsletter. The first two Macs we're gonna get are gonna be the lower end 14 inch MacBook Pro and the 24 inch iMac with the base M4 chip, likely coming around the end of this year. And then we're gonna have the new 14 and 16 inch high end MacBook Pros with the M4 Pro and M4 Max chips coming either at the end of this year or early next year, maybe in the spring, like a March event. We're also gonna be getting the Mac Mini with both the M4 and M4 Pro configurations, likely around the same timeline end of this year or early next year. And then we're gonna have the 13 and 15 inch MacBook Airs, which are likely coming around the spring of next year. Then we have the Mac Studio with a high-end M4 chip coming around the middle or WWDC next year. And then finally, a new Mac Pro with an M4 Ultra chip, or even better, due in the second half of 2025. Now, the most important thing to know is that the Mac Studio will apparently be getting a higher-end version of the Brava chip that will be coming to the other high-end Macs, but it definitely will not get the Hydra chip, which is destined for the Mac Pro only. And this actually matches my previous theory about these high-end Macs and what Apple's gonna do with them. The theory stems from the M3 Max die no longer having the Ultra Fusion connection, which has been confirmed with die shots, which means one of two things. If Apple planned to skip the M3 Ultra and not update the Mac Studio for another year, then maybe it was pointless to add Ultra Fusion to the bottom since it wasted precious three nanometer space on the silicon wafer. So without Ultra Fusion, they can basically print more chips 
on a single wafer. And the second option is that Apple actually meant to redesign the Ultra Chip from the ground up instead of combining two Max dies together to create a single Ultra like they've been doing. Why? Well, because there are many components of the Max that don't scale well at all when you double them and create an Ultra. Like when you're doubling the media encoders, the other ones are basically useless. You can't really scale them properly. Same with the neural engine. Two of them just don't work well together. Or the eight efficiency cores that are kind of pointless on a desktop machine that's always plugged in and even more. It makes by far the most sense to redesign the Ultra chip from the ground up and fine tune everything so you only get what you need for the Mac Studio and have no extra waste, especially since three nanometer nodes are more expensive. And this matches a leak from Corp Cry on X, who said that the future ultra and higher tier chips will no longer have efficiency cores, which points to a full redesign of the ultra. Now, the only problem is that the entire M3 chip family is built on TSMC's custom N3B process node, which as it turns out, out is completely incompatible with the future industry-wide three nanometer nodes known as N3E and then N3P and N3X in terms of the actual lithography since those future nodes have a lot less EUV layers. So if Apple redesigned the Ultra chip for the M3 family release this year, they would have to do it all over again for the M4 Ultra chip on the completely different N3E node since that one would be compatible with the future nodes. And guess what leak we got from TrendForce? Apparently the M3 Ultra die is gonna be built on the N3E lithography instead of N3B, which the entire M3 family is currently built on. And Apple usually matches the nodes to the chip family numbers. So what this points to is Apple just skipping M3 Ultra altogether and calling this new chip the M4 Ultra. And that might be what they're actually doing, skipping M3 Ultra, because apparently Apple tested an M3 version of the Ultra for the Mac Studio, but Mark Gurman thinks there's a good chance that Apple will skip it completely and go for the M4 Ultra built on N3E, which would leave the Mac Studio and Mac Pro that we have right now to hang for another year. But now with that said, let's get into the M4 Extreme, which is by far the most interesting part. Now in terms of why Apple would remove the Ultra Fusion connector from the M3 Max die, I believe that Apple was actually planning to move that over to the Ultra die instead so that they could combine two Ultras to create an extreme chip, which was actually rumored for the last couple of years, but Apple ended up canceling it completely. And I believe it got canceled because the initial design was actually meant to combine four max chip dies together, or in other words, two ultras together side by side, but the problem is that there are no ultra fusion connectors on the sides, only on the bottom, so they wouldn't be able to connect two ultra chips together properly, and it would need a brand new method of communication, likely happening underneath the chips, using some sort of interposer and different connections, which I think, worked so poorly that the performance didn't scale and it just ended up being a dud, not being as efficient as all the other chips and therefore Apple had to cancel that design. But I believe that Apple is still working on the M4 Extreme chip and that's exactly what the Hydra chip is, with two Ultra chips communicating over the Ultra Fusion connection, which will scale so much better with just connecting two chips instead of trying to connect four dies, so it's gonna be so much more simple to manufacture. And if you think about it, the word Hydra is actually from Greek mythology, which is a serpent or a monster with multiple heads from the story of Hercules. And whenever he would cut off one of the heads, it was replaced by two heads connected at the neckline. So what if this code name is meant to symbolize the M4 Extreme chip made out of two 
ultra heads or dies. And it's by far the best way to make sense of that Hydra chip, which is exclusive to the Mac Pro, and it would double the performance of the Ultra chip in the simplest way possible. I fully believe that the new M4 Extreme chip will outperform the best of the best consumer CPUs out there, including the best GPUs from Nvidia in terms of raw performance. It really will revolutionize the industry and make everyone start leaning towards ARM chips as the future for server setups instead of x86, which takes insane amounts of power. And it makes perfect sense why Apple decided to wait until the M4 chip family because of all the AI features, as well as the fact that it's the first three nanometer node that's compatible with all of the future nodes. So it's in Apple and TSMC's best interest to ditch the initial one-off N3B node as fast as possible and switch to N3E since it's literally only Apple using N3B as the only customer, which may explain why the M3 family of chips isn't going to last as long as previous years. But with that said, here are the main takeaways you should get from this video. Number one, the M4 chips are gonna be special to Apple since we know every single Mac is gonna get updated with one. For number two, Apple is gonna shake up their ultra chip design for the first time, potentially redesigning it from the ground up, which means we'll get a huge upgrade that you should likely wait for. And for number three, the M4 Extreme Hydra chip is confirmed. So if I were you, I would avoid buying a Mac Pro for another year or maybe year and a half until that hits the market. So hopefully you enjoyed this video and if you did, go ahead and subscribe above and check out one of those two videos right there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.